welcome to my side hustle episode 5, delivering my first project, um, part 1. And last week we've talked about how we went from writing a sample to signing the first client, and this week we're going to be talking about how we're going to be delivering uh, this first project. Uh, but before that, I just want to uh, say a couple of things. First is, uh, welcome everyone from Reddit. Um, you guys are awesome. I really enjoyed talking to you um, in comments and messages. There was a lot of um, great um, com suggestions and uh, knowledge that was shared there from um, people who are much more experienced than I am. And I was really um, surprised by, by how many people are actually so knowledgeable about it that came out and like answered many uh, many of the questions so thank you for that and i think i replied to everything i uh, could find but if you still haven't gotten your response feel free to post it on the rate post or just contact me in any other way and you know I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you and now i think there was like two really good comments that i i think we should i should talk about here so that like make sure everybody um see, sees the, those two particular comments they were really helpful one is from Mr. Uh, Valuable K, and he broke down how the royalties work on um, kind of like a recurring type of projects, like such as a financial newsletter, because some clients that signed um, to the newsletter from my advertisement, for example, they could continue using the service for like two years, three years, five years, and so on. And uh, essentially, you, you get paid on the first uh, sale, which is called like a front end, you get paid like a dollar amount per name as opposed to percentages, like for example, like five buck per lead or 25 buck a lead, something like that. But then on the recurring, you get percentage of that. So like if somebody signs up for like 500 bucks, dollar letter a year, you, know, you, you get like maybe 20 bucks or 50 bucks first year. And then if they stay for second year, maybe you'll get like 5% of that as well. So that's very useful information. And another one was from a, a, somebody named uh, Luxoran. Uh, he suggested that uh, I should check out this book from a guy by name Kyle Milligan, who is a copywriter from probably the largest financial publisher out there, Agora. And Kyle also has a YouTube channel. You guys should go check it out. It's pretty good. Um, the guy is much more knowledgeable than I am and been in this business for, for many years. And But what's cool about that book is it's exactly like what I feel like been missing uh, in, in my situation specifically because the Reddit post from, from which I've learned, they covered a lot, pretty much everything in terms of how to get clients and uh, how important is the big idea, like the, the sales angle and unique mechanism and you know how important is the emotionally appealing primary promise. Like, you know, the big things, the 80% of the success if you will. But then it, the original Reddit post didn't really talk about how to actually write the body of the copy because average sales letter is like 40, 60 pages, sometimes smaller. I think this project is actually smaller than, than 40 pages. I think it's around like 20, 30. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff to write. And I, I did try to learn from the funnels as much as possible, but still I, I knew, I was pretty confident like there should be like a science to it and there should be some kind of rules and best practices and I just uh, didn't know where to get them. And this book um, by the name Take Their Money is exactly about that. It's about how you can um, go from your big idea to writing actual body of the copy paragraph after paragraph and it's, it's just amazing. And the best part, it, it's it's Kyle's kind of like a gateway offer, which means it's priced very affordable. It's, I think it's like completely underpriced to how much value it brings. It's like the best 12 bucks I spent probably this year so far. Uh, so yeah, there's that. And one more thing that I, I think a lot of people would find uh, useful based on the comments on the Reddit post. I just incorporated my entity that I'm going to be using to run this copywriting um, business. And the reason I'm kind of separating from my personal finances is because um, if, if I put the money into my personal bank account from my work in, in copywriting, it would be kind of layered on top of my um, regular income. And because I'm in Canada, we have where we have like a marginal tax rate system, these dollars would be taxed at like really, really high uh, tax rate, like like I think more than 40% at this point. So um, so if you have 
uh, separate streams of income, it's usually a really good idea to separate those into different buckets so that you, you don't get pushed into higher and higher uh, marginal tax rate, but you know get get taxed at a, at a lower rate. And then, um, but even if you don't have any other income, it's still a good idea because it, 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 when you separate it into sort of like a business, you get to spend first and then you get to pay taxes. And what I mean by that, like, if we take my example, like I'm gonna get wired like 37.50 as a prepayment for this project. And if I put it into my bank account, I would have to pay like 40% tax on it probably at the end of, at the, end of the year. So I'll, I'll be left with something like 22, 50, something like that. And then, um, but then because I incorporate a separate entity, I'll put the money there. And what's gonna happen is not only I'll pay a lower tax rate on this, because now it's like from, from from fresh start, but also I can expense a lot of stuff that could be helpful for business, like you know, phone, computers, uh, office lease, kind of a, you know, payments, stuff like that. Um, and essentially, I could expense the whole thing as much as you know, as much as reasonable, and pay very very little tax on it, if, if any. So, um, so yeah, it's it's, it's a usually a really good idea to separate uh, um, your business into separate. Kind of an entity, um, not even to mention all the legal uh, advantages that it gives you in case something goes wrong. Anyways, writing my first sales letter, real real sales letter, and it's going so far. Um, I see this as a three step process, like the whole thing, and it's research, design, and writing. And this past couple of days, I've been primarily involved with trying to research the product and understand what is it. I'm promoting now. And then number two is what kind of a lead idea I could come up with given the product. So we go, let's look into these things in particular. So yeah, research. For me, it consists of two parts, internal and external. What I mean when I say internal, it has to do with everything that your publisher can tell you about the product and, and, and the industry so that you can start to understand what, how you could promote the product. And the first thing they actually done, I mean, the publisher done after we've signed is um, give me access to their backend. And what it means is they give me access to all of their past publications as well as past sales letters and promotions so that I could go and see everything they've been telling their customers, like basically the things that I, I'm going to be promoting to the public. To giving you access to the past publications, they would usually have a call with you and that's how it went for me. I had a separate call with the analyst who actually um, researches industries and writes stock recommendations and publishes this to the, to the clients. And th the call was super useful because you get to kind of talk to the creator of what he thinks uh, is special about his product, what's the, what are the best parts, what um, his readers like the most, what they like the least. And um, yeah, it's it also a great opportunity to ask questions, especially about numbers. In, in the world of financial copywriting, it's performance and, you know, um, most of the promises, like the, the promises you're going to make in, in the letter are around numbers. So um, it's a good place to sort of ask how the performance been and what's the best performing um, numbers, what the worst performing numbers. And I actually ended up asking for like, every number they could give me and they just send me like Excel spreadsheets so that I could see um, what the product looks like and how, what the best way to kind of present the, you know, well, the, the newsletter. Uh, when it comes to internal research is to make sure you, uh, to understand what kind of voice the publisher wants to have in the, in the ad. And it, it could be um, somewhere on the range from like where very informative and calm and like analytical to like very hyped emotional you know hot kind of stuff and this specific publisher been in business for like 50 years next year and most of their readership is like older people um who getting closer to to, to the retirement so they prefer less risk more certainty and that's why um they asked me to make sure the ad is kind of consistent with the overall brand and consistent with the current membership base, which is more conservative, more uh, risk averse, um, not as hyped, stuff like that. 
after I gained access to their backend and spoke to the analyst, I basically um, sat down and you know went, went over all the files, read every single publication, and looked at the Excel sheet and tried to like play with the numbers and see what's the best way to calculate it. What, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses uh, that I could showcase and add? And um, by the time I was done with this part, I had a pretty good idea of what the product is. I was really excited because I felt like it's a really good product. They, they're doing a really good job for their customers. And there's a lot of cool things about the way they, they, they do their investment analysis and the stocks they recommend. So I was really excited um, about what kind of angle it could come up for this specific ad. I was pretty much done with the internal part. The next step was to go out and do a little, uh, a little bit of external research. And that has to do with Google um, in most cases, where I would just go and try to learn about marijuana industry in general, marijuana investing, try to maybe read forums and see what's the sentiment been. Um, like for example, marijuana stocks have been doing really badly for the last past, like this year in general, been pretty bad. So the overall sentiment is very negative. But for the last past, um, like three years has been pretty good, everything is up. So this kind of gives you an extra edge of understanding like how the market is feeling right now to, to, to what you're gonna be pitching them. And just to make sure yet yeah, maybe somebody's joining us just now, um, we're writing a sales letter promoting a subscription to a financial newsletter that's promoting marijuana stocks. Uh, it's like a portfolio of marijuana stocks basically, so yeah. So by the time you have your internal a research and external research done you basically have your research file in front of you and you should be in a position where you have a really clear understanding of where this is all going um, that's the indicator of a good research and by the time I've done both I was basically ready to get into the next uh, stage of the process which is a design part I would be starting to design the uh, the, the, the sales letter and since the client asked me to email them uh, like a first page a couple of first pages like come up with like different ideas and, and send them like basically a title maybe a primary promise and a little bit of like introduction into the letter um, with like several different angles so that they could pick wh whichever angle they like I just focused on the <clears throat> first uh, two things which is primary promise and title which is a unique mechanism or like a sales angle so um, and I think there's like many ways to go about doing it because I think it's like the most creative part of the process, but the way I did it, I, I uh, listed every feature I could think of, well, from my research file, as way, everything is now based on the research file. I would list every feature from my research file about this investment strategy, because that's the product I'm promoting. And then I would try to pick the most uh, important ones. And how do I know which are the most important ones? It, it, this is where like experience comes handy. It's like shopping. When you enforce something in the market, like a cell phone or a car or whatever, you kind of like start to get this experience of knowing what's good, what's um, really a uh, good price, what's overpriced, what's unique, what's cool, <clears throat> what's like just garbage, right? It's all about experience. Like, just to give you an example, I've I've lived in uh, I've been in Vancouver for like ten years now, and I probably lived in like five or six different places I uh, like rented five six different places during uh, this time and um, if you know anything about Vancouver real estate like it's it's busy it's packed everything's exp expensive and like good listings go like within hours of being posted so I've spent a lot of time on Craigslist just like refreshing it like every hour and trying to find a good place to live in and after some time I got really good at it like you, you just develop this eye just because of like seeing so many listings and like just shopping around, you start to understand, okay, this place is really good. Oh, this one is the best I've seen. Price is amazing on this one. Oh, this is definitely overpriced. Oh, this is like really bad con condition, like very poorly maintained. Um, things like that. Like if you look at the real estate market in general, it has like features, right? Uh, of like, such as like location, maybe like, a, uh, like a view if it's a condom, uh, maybe, you know, uh, uh, maybe, uh, amenities or furniture finishes stuff like that and then you would have all these features and then every like uh, every like uh, like every listing would have its main kind of a feature you know like the best location or you know the best kind of furniture the best price the best view 
uh, how do you know which one is the best? Well, because you know how it stacks up against the competition. And another part is like what the buyers want from this specific listing. Like for example, for me, when I was a student, like the most important part is like how close it's to the school. So let's say if you are kind of very close to school and you know most of your clients, like most of your buyers, uh, people that want to rent from you are students, and then you're very close to university, maybe like your your your, your lead idea would be like um, like two bus stops from SFU, like that's where I went to school. Um, or you know if you're renting to like young professionals, you could say like three minute walk from financial district, something like that, right? So the point is. Um, once you understand the market and you understand what's competing offers, what people want, you just know what features are important and what features are the most important and where to focus your attention. It's the same thing in real estate, promoting like a real estate, same thing promoting a financial newsletter or any other product. Like in a, in a specific case of financial newsletters uh, and in specifically with this publisher because um, uh, their clients are like older people who are getting close to retirement, they're more, again, uh, risk averse. So I would focus on more kind of like a risk averse feature of the of the product and less on like hyping up the, the potential of the big rewards, right? So yeah, um, I think it's like one of the main things I kind of learned is uh, like basically list the features, pick the best features and just work with this. So, um, once you have all your features, I like to first focus on the features that have to do with the numbers because in the financial world, that's where your primary promise is going to be coming from, right? How much money I can make. And there's many ways you can play with the numbers. You could focus on like the best performing stock ever. You could focus on like best months ever, best year ever, or maybe like what's their, what percent of stocks go up versus percent of stocks that go down. Um, uh, how much the, their stocks go up on average versus maybe how much they go down on average and like many many ways to be sliced and how you're gonna slice it is it depends again on your target audience or maybe like what the best feature of the portfolio is and in my case like I, I found like um, I found that they're actually over the last like two or three years they outperformed the marijuana index by like almost five times and I feel like it's really good number it's like it's a lot um, it's a really like meaningful outperformance of the market and because their audience is more like more conservative they probably don't care about like particular stocks they want to like on average over a longer term period I felt like um, a primary promise of something like hey here's how we outperform marijuana index by five times over the last three years is like should really resonate with them because it's it's on average over many trades and over a longer period given the target audience I felt like this is uh, approach I want to take here. Now, once you have your um, primary promise, which is your features with the numbers, then like I start to shift my attention to more qualitative features because that's um, this going to help me to come up with my unique mechanism or sales angle, lead idea, big idea, call it what you like. And um, yeah, so, and there's a lot of this, a lot. Uh, how many stocks they track, what kind of um, investment strategy you use, are they value investing, mm, more like growth investing, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, what's how diversified they are, how often they trade, many, many, many features. But uh, what caught my eye is they do this thing that not many people can do successfully. They not only pick, try to pick good stocks and they have a system for that, but they also time the marijuana sector in terms of, okay, these are good stocks, but because like sector is kind of, going down, we're going to like unload some of it. And because it's going up, we're going to like overload some of those. Um, usually it's like very hard to pull off, but because they have a strong track record, you know, I tend to believe that they, they know what they're doing. So I kind of try to focus on this specific feature of like, not only trying to pick good stocks, but also instead of just holding them, because now you kind of exposed to like ups and downs, ups and downs, but you kind of like capture more on the upside and then you get less hit on the downside because they unload stuff on the way. Um, so I picked this feature and now I feel like the, probably the hardest part, but also the most fun part for me personally is try to like take this and put it into something that could explain it in a fun or like engagement way, engaging way to, to the audience. And I don't think there's like a right way to go about it, but the way I did it is I try to like write down the feature in a plain language and I try to pick on like keywords, for example, like, okay, they do two things, they pick good stocks and then they time the sector. So for me, it's like, okay, I see there's like two parts to it. 
most people probably just pick good stocks, but not many people also time the sector. <clears throat> so for me, it's like the key here is like two parts is my key. And then I start saying, okay, what's cool that has two parts? And like, I remember the first thing that came to my mind was like yin yang, because it's like, you know, black and white. So I felt like, okay, this is the idea. And you're not trying to necessarily like develop the idea at this point. I think what I like to do, I like to like just brainstorm, write any ideas. I don't think whether they're stupid at this point, whether they have the future. Most of this will never see any light of the day, but the point is just to brainstorm as many ideas as you can. And then I would sit down there, like think more, maybe like alpha, omega, like also two parts. And then, you know, once I'm kind of like hitting the wall, I would try to think of <clears throat> like some other keywords, for example, to, to, to pull all the strategy, like picking good stocks and then timing the sector, they do a lot of adjustments. Like, like I noticed like every newsletter like has like small adjustments, but like trades in and out. So I felt like, okay, these guys have a lot of changes. And you know, the keyword for me is like changes, right? Change. And then I tried to think, okay, change could be something like, um, like what else is changing? It's like, it's like to adapt, right? Uh, it might be random and some of these are pretty damn random, but that's how it kind of works for me. And I would say, okay, adapt to adopt. What's the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear the word adopt? It's like Darwin's natural selection. So I, I would write that down, you know, maybe I could ex use Darwin's natural selection to explain what this portfolio is trying to do. Um, or like other thing is like, okay, they do a lot of changes, but <clears throat> in some ways it's also kind of like a rotation because they're going in and out, in and out of like certain stocks and sectors. And I felt like, okay, rotations, and then what come to my mind is like um, migration. And then I was like, okay, what's migrating? It's like nomads. So I would just write down like nomads. And by the way, I don't think any of those ideas, like I end up sending any of those ideas to them, maybe maybe, maybe one, but um, but that's kind of, kind of how like a process works. I would try to write down my main feature I'd like to promote, and then I would break out keywords. And then I try to like go over the chain of like, until I come up with something like unique that I could use and then relate it back. And once you have your list of like these random things like yin yang, alpha omega, what did I say? Nomads, wherever. Then I would take that list and I would start like crossing things, things out. And the way I do it, I will pick an idea and I'll try to see whether I could come up with like themes and concepts and like actual sentences to describe the product. And if I cannot do it like fairly fast, like I would Google things, I would like Google images things, keywords, try to read Wikipedia page, like just try to like absorb as much as possible about these things that I wrote down. And if I cannot relate them like in a straightforward fashion, I just cross it out. Um, and this could be very time consuming. This could be very quick, just depends. And what's cool about it, um, like, I mean, like what also you could do is swipe files are very useful for it. I, like I, I, I heard a lot about swipe files is basically like the collection of like very successful promotions that um, from the past. Um, and I use, like, I, I didn't use them extensively yet, but I definitely could see the value where you can just like kind of see the theme and then you can relate the theme from like some other successful uh, campaign. Uh, I think the risk is like, just like being a copy of something else, uh, like without understanding like why it was successful. But um, I think it won't hurt if you just go over some of the swipes just to get some inspiration for, for your ideas. So yeah, yesterday I finalized the three ideas I like the most for uh, this specific campaign. And I wrote a page for each, uh, like a title, subtitle, promise, a little bit of a text just to show the client where I'm going with each idea. And I emailed it to, the, to them and just waiting for the response. I told them I'm happy to redo everything if they're not uh, completely on board with any of the ideas. So we'll see what comes back. And um, yeah, I think that's the video guys. Uh, next time we're gonna talk about based on whatever the client will come back to me with, maybe I would have to go back and redo the uh, lead ideas part, or maybe they like something and then we could talk about designing the rest of the uh, sales letter and uh, actually start writing it. Uh, yeah, until then, yeah, enjoy your time everyone.